Hey, this is Matt. Welcome to the whiteboard. In this video, we will visualize binary search. Suppose you have an array of 10 friends. Each friend is an object with a unique ID. So suppose also that you wake up one morning and get a letter and you open the letter and it reads, well, you read it. So are you interested? Of course you're interested. The question is, who among your friends has an ID of 24? Actually, this is a trivial problem. Let's do it real quick. Feed a function an array and the ID we want. Loop through the array. Grab a friend at each loop. If the friend has the right ID, return the friend. If there aren't any matches when the looping is done, return null. This kind of brute force search is called linear search. Linear search works, but there is a far more effective way to search on one condition. The array has to be sorted on the key you're searching on. Like this array is sorted on the ID property. Each friend has an ID and the friends are lined up from the smallest ID to the largest. The advantage of a sorted array is you can start making guesses about where a number might be. Because for any number, you know that all the numbers after it are larger, and all the numbers before it are smaller. This is obvious, of course, but from obvious things come unobvious things, like binary search. So we need to find a number in a sorted array. Because your program doesn't have eyeballs, it can't see the 24 right there. So it needs an algorithm to find it. This is how the binary search algorithm works. First, take the middle item. If there's two items in the middle, pick the one on the left, 50 in this case, not 51. This item is the pivot because it pivots between the two halves of the array. If the pivot happens to have the value you're searching for, bang, you're done. Otherwise, you have to choose which half to search, the lesser half or the greater half. In this case, since we're looking for 24 and we know that every item after 50 is going to be greater than 50, we can eliminate the greater half and focus on the lesser half. So what do we do with it? Here's the trick. We do exactly what we did before. First, we pick a pivot, then check to see if it has the value we're looking for, it's not 24, so we need to choose a half. In this case, we won't look at the lesser half, since everything there will be less than 8. So we look at the greater half, and again, we choose a pivot, see if it matches, and when it doesn't, choose the most promising half. And now, all that's left is 24. Do we need to do anything new to handle this case? Nope, just pick the pivot, and see if it matches, which it does. Hooray, we have found the one who loves you. It's Alice. Now, if you look at the path to Alice, you'll see that binary search is a process of honing in by halves until the leftover half is the single item you're looking for. Here's the algorithm in pseudocode. Pick middle item in array. If it has greater value than search value, repeat with greater items. If lesser, repeat with lesser items. If equals, return item. Like a lot of our algorithms, binary search is surprisingly simple. Still, it's not as simple as just looping through the array. Why not just use linear search? With the friends array we've been working with, both ways take the same number of steps. When you loop, each iteration is one step. And it takes four steps to reach 24. With binary search, each pivot is a step. And it also takes four steps to get to 24. So they seem roughly equivalent, right? Actually, if we look at the worst cases, you start to see a difference. Let's say 24 is the last number in the array. If you have 10 friends, the worst case for linear search is 10. For binary search, 
4 is the worst case. Now suppose you get out of your room and start talking to people. All of a sudden you have a hundred friends. Now binary search gets even more efficient than looping. Why? Let's walk through the first steps of the search. In linear search, after the first step, you've eliminated just one, and 99 are left. After the second step, you've eliminated two, you have 98 to go, etc. With binary search, after the first step, 50 items are eliminated, half. After two steps, half the remaining items are again eliminated, etc. The efficiency of binary search only increases as the size of the array increases. So suppose you start a band and go on a reality show and wow, all of a sudden you have a million friends. And then you get that letter. How long will it take to find that special one in a million friend? Amazingly, the worst case for the loop is a million but the worst case for binary search is 20. 20. 20 steps between you and maybe love. Isn't that neat? Still, I rank binary search just to five on the neat scale. There are much, much neater things to come.